Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Sadly, this is going to be the last video in our um, playlist on transplantation immunology, so let's not waste any time and get straight into it. First of all, in this uh, episode or in this video, we're going to be discussing the prevention of rejection. The non-specific immunosuppression using cortisol that will down-regulate the expression of several genes coding for inflammatory cytokines, as well as the inhibition of the expression of adhesion molecules, which lead to the inhibition, eventual inhibition of the leukocyte migration to the site of inflammation. Now we know that leukocytes are going to be also releasing cytokines, so this is also, uh, its inhibition is going to be preventing or decreasing the levels of the rejection. Also the cytokines, the inflammatory cytokines that are going to be expressed, that are not going to be expressed in this case, I apologize, they're not going to be expressed in this case, and we know from the free previous video that these inflammatory cytokines can have detrimental effects on the rejection. Now some treatments on the other hand, by the way, these are very broad, they're not very specific. Uh, some other treatments are specific like the cyclosporin A. Uh, before I actually dive into what is written on slide uh, on the slide, I want to give some more, um, I, I want to just explain how the mechanism works and then we're going to be explaining this uh, blockage essentially. So first of all, the cell is going to be getting a signal and the signal is going to be increasing the levels of the CA2+, be it from inside the cell by the endoplasmic reticulum or from outside the cell using obviously channels. So basically what is going to be happening here is that this elevated level of uh, CA2 plus is going to be activating the calmodulin slash the calcineurin phosphatase. By phosphatase, we know that they're going to be removing the phosphate groups. So basically this uh, uh, calcineurin slash the calmodulin phosphatase is going to be removing the phosphate group from the NFAT. For when it when this phosphate when this phosphate is removed from the NFAT, this transcription factor, which is obviously a protein, can migrate to the inside of the nucleus, binding to the gene of interest, and this is going to be uh, basically increasing. This is going to be triggering the expression of this gene, and thereby it is, this gene is specifically going to be giving us interleukin two. We know that interleukin two is essentially going to also be giving us lymphocytes. This, so this idea is very important. So what what is going to be happening here is that in, in the presence of the cyclosporin A, it is going to be inhibiting the effect of the calcineurin slash the calmodulin phosphatase, which is eventually going to be causing the NFATC to remain uh, phosphorylated. Therefore, it is not going to be able to migrate to the nucleus and it is not going to be able to trigger the expression of the interleukin 2. So those met methods mentioned here are going to be resulting in the patients being heavily compromised and um, uh, with heavily compromised immune system systems rendering them prone to diseases and this by the way goes for the first part of what we mentioned now on a side note cyclosporin a also induces the synthesis of the tgf beta which has immunosuppressive activity so basically it's it's going to be triggering um, or let's say inhibiting the immune response in two different methods. First, the NFAT is not going to get expressed, therefore the interleukin-2 is not going to be giving us lymphocytes, and also the TGF-beta is going to be uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be inducing the synthesis of the TGF beta, which is which has these immunosuppressive uh, effects as well. Now, other treatments other than cyclosporin A are also present, like the FK five hundred and six, which just uh, which has just uh, the same effect as the cyclosporin A. It is going to be suppressing the cytokine production in T cell and the, rep the repamycin. It is going to be inhibiting the T cell activation by blocking the signal uh, trans transduction of the interleukin two. Essentially, it targets the signal and not the production of the T cells themselves. This is very important, right? So in the previous example, in the cyclosporin A, we mentioned that it's not going to be producing interleukin-2. Therefore, in the first place, we will not have these in the presence of a highly expressed or uh, a high levels of T cells due to the absence of the interleukin-2. In the, for the most part, this interleukin-2 is not going to get expressed in the first place, right? In this case, they are going to be ex getting expressed. However, th there is a, obviously a signal cascade, a signal pathway, and this is what's going to be blocked by the rapamycin. Uh, by the way, in this uh, slide, we also see the uh, we also see the mechanism of action that I mentioned uh, previously. Now, finally, there are experimental approaches that target antibodies against cell surface antigens. So it's not only uh, triggering the, for example, the production of the T cells 
for the cascade of signals that is going to be giving us these T cells. We can also target the T cells themselves and by obviously uh, specifying specific antigens like the CD3, CD4 that are only present on T cells, the CD8 which are exclusive not only to T cells but specifically to the cytotoxic T cells as well as the interleukin-2 receptor so not only the interleukin-2, the interleukin-2 receptor and also the co-stimulatory -co molecules like the B7.1 and the B7.2. Point two. This concludes this uh, this uh, very interesting, in my opinion, uh, playlist on transplantation immunology. I hope you gained some new information from this playlist. I'd like to thank all of you guys for watching. This has been Ali from B Biology.